Hi, I'm Steve Parry, Paz Big P, whatever you, you know me as. Today, we're at the lovely Partridge Lakes Fishery, doing a little knowledge is power video. Gonna try and answer some of your questions, what you've been sending into the page, run you through some hints and tips on how to fish this type of fishery. Today, we're on Holbar. It's a bit of a change from the norm for me. Normally, it's we're over on the coveys doing fishing matches, but today, as I say, we're on Holbar, gonna show you various methods on shore pole maggots, catching a few silver skimmers, roach, perch, maybe an odd barbel if we're lucky, long pole with some pellets, try and catch a few F1s and carp, and a bit of rod work, bomb and bread, hybrid, maybe a bit of pellet cone fishing. So it's winter, well, it's going into winter, it's autumn time, it's getting cold, fish are slowing down. You know, we just want to get some bites and have a day's fishing. That's what it's all about. Whether it's silvers or carp, we just want to enjoy ourselves. If you stick around till the end of today's video, we'll be releasing last episode's competition winner. We're also going to be running one today where you can win a few goodies, what we've been using today. Brad Lucas, this is for you. Thanks for your question on Instagram. Uh, commercial, how to approach a commercial venue in the colder months. My tip, just keep it simple, simple as possible. Just no room for all kinds of different baits and tactics, just keep things simple. Maggots, pellets, a bit of corn, maybe some bread for Dobbin. You know, that's all we need. Today we're on Holbar. Our, our bread line is across, you know, on, on another venue we might fish pole. We'll spend 45 minutes, an hour maybe on bread, just searching our peg, try and get a few bites. Keeping an eye out around us, see if anybody's catching. We, we'll go from there. We don't want to start introducing bait all over our swim before the fish have even started feeding because, you, you know, your session's over, your match is over. So just start nice and simple, dobbing a bit of bread. We'll give it an hour, you know, 45 minutes an hour. If it's not really working or other people are catching, feeding bait, this is when I'll switch to something that a lot of people have forgotten about, people don't use anymore, pellet cone. One of my favorite methods this time of year, it's it, we can control the amount of bait that we put in. We can have a little one, we can have a big one, and we can just cast around our peg, find the fish, with, just we're feeding next to nothing, it's doing us no harm at all. So that'll be me next, me next go. From there, we'll have a maggot line short. This, you know, obviously it'll catch us everything that swims, we'll, especially this type of venue, it's stuffed with fish. Roach, skimmers, perch, if we're lucky, an odd barbel, maybe a carp later on in the session. Another tactic will be long pole, as long as conditions will, will allow us, 13, 14 metres normally, where we'll feed a few micros through a kinder pot, fish an expander on the uke. This is just, you know, we hopefully you'll catch some carp, F1s, and some of the, the big skimmers that live in here. This question's from Seb the Globe Trotter. What's my preference on hybrid versus method this time of year, autumn, going into winter time? Well, th this can be venue dependent, really. You know, obviously do your homework, find out what, what locals use, but normally in the colder months, you're not going to be casting into shallow water across. You know, you're going to be, you know, fishing in a, in a bit deeper water. This is where, personally, I would use a hybrid. You know, we're, fish we're casting out. We'll, we could be leaving the, the rig in for 15, 20, 30 minutes waiting for a bite when it's cold. So I want to know my rig is fishing 
and presented how I want it to be. And the hybrid feeder gives me that every single time. Next question is from Dylan JS. How to find the fish? Location is really important when in the winter time. Fish will often show up. There'll be balls of fish in different parts of your peg. So it's really important to find the fish as early as you can. This is where dobbin is, is a brilliant tactic in the winter, whether it's on the pole or whether it's on the rod. We're fishing the rod today, so we've started we've clipped up across to the far bank. It's a bit uneven, so when, when we're moving about, we'll have to unclip, you know, and, and move our clip accordingly. But start bombing bread, bombing corn, but just don't introduce any bait, and let's have a little cast about and see if we can find some fish. Keep an eye out on anglers either side of you. That can tell you where the fish are as well. Keep an eye out for fish that are topping. If there's some topping to your right, we'll have a go to our right. If the angler to the left catching some, we'll cast a bit to our left. There's always a few telltale signs that will show you where they are. But failing that, just have a little cast about or a dob about on the pole and you will find them. When you find them, you know, stick to that spot. And obviously they'll back off with it being cold and then we'll search again till we find them again. Right, well, we've been fishing about an hour and a half now. Uh, we started on bomb and bread, like we said. We've had a few casts, a couple of likely spots across, but to be honest, nothing really happened. We had an odd line, a few indications and stuff, but we, we never caught any fish. Uh, it was pretty obvious. It, it's still mild. It's not gone really cold yet, so it's probably a bit too early for, you know, dobbing about bomb and bread, but it's always worth to try. So we've, we've switched to cone and to be honest it's been it was pretty instant once we've uh, put some bait on and we found a little spot across now where we've caught four or five fish on the bounce out the same hole so we'll keep going as we are now and we'll see how it goes you know hopefully it'll just keep going round and we can stay on it but normally this time of year you know it's cooling down it's clearing off the water the fish will tend to back off after we've caught a few so this is the time then we'll drop onto our long pole line where we've been feeding a few micros try and catch a few skimmers an odd carp and then we'll just you know we'll alternate between the two we'll catch a few on one line when it slows down put a little bit of bait in rest it and go back onto the rod hopefully a few fish will have moved back in and we can catch a few more on that This question's been sent in by a few different people regarding depths, what I would fish in the margins during the winter. Well, mar margin fishing during the winter is not really something you know you want to be focusing on. Obviously, on certain days, you will catch down your margins, but it, there's not a depth that I would really look for down the margins. I'd, I'd, more, I'd be looking more for, for some, maybe some cover, a pallet, some reeds, an overhanging bush, something like that but it's not something that I would concentrate on feed a little bit of bait every now and again and if you were going to catch normally it would be later on in the session when an odd fish comes coming in for, for a little bit of food but I wouldn't really look for the depth it would be more cover that I would be looking for next question is from Frosto and 16 shallow rigs or deep rigs during the winter months. Well, we can, we, we can use both, but the shallow rig will be used as a dobbin rig, either on popped up bread off the bottom or on a pole rig off the bottom. We won't introduce any bait when we're fishing shallow. It will just be a case of dobbing around our peg, looking for an odd fish that we can try and catch. When we're feeding bait, we want to be fishing in the deeper parts of our pegs. 
the warmer water is, is lower down normally in, in the winter time. You know, we have ice on the water, we have cold easterly winds. These all cool the top layers down in the winter. So this is why we need to drop down into the deeper water. It's a little bit warmer. The fish feel a lot more comfortable and that's where they're willing to feed. You know, four foot is probably the ideal depth in the winter, no shallower. Right, we've had a nice couple of hours now on the Pelicone. Uh, we've caught some lovely big carp, a few F1s. We've even had a big barbel, a couple of skimmers, just casting about our peg, just nicking an odd fish here and there. But finally, at last, the, uh, the sun's making an appearance. So we're going to have a little look on our pole line. We started feeding it about 15, 20 minutes ago. We've put two little nuggets of pellets. We've squeezed them tight because it's probably seven foot deep where we're feed, fishing here. So. You'll get them in a little ball, get them down. So we're going to have a little look on the pole now. Hopefully there'll be a few fish waiting for us. My one minute masterclass today is a method we've fished at the pellet cone. It's been neglected a little bit over the last few years for one reason or another, but on its day like today, it can be deadly. It's simple to use as long as you get your pellets right. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute tops is all you need to soak them for. We need the pellets to stay in a pellet form. We've got to give them a good hard squeeze into the pellet cone, but we need them to hold together on the cast but break down once they're in the water. So it's really important to get your pellets right. Simple to use, just once they're ready, good firm squeeze into your pellet cone, slide your bait and needle through, hook the loop on your hook length and pull it through. Job done. Another quick tip is I always have a few tied up on my side tray. So when you wind in, it's easy enough to just unhook, put one on and cast one out. You can have three or four set up with different baits on, different colours on, work out what's best on the day. Right, we've had a great day here today. Uh, first hour, I, I didn't really feel it, if I'm being honest, it was lashing down with rain and fish bomb and bread, and it, it wasn't very good, if I'm honest, we caught absolutely nothing. But, We've introduced a little bit of bait with the pelicone. It's totally transformed the peg. We've gone from catching nothing to basically a fisher chuck on the rod. We've had some lovely big carp, some barbel, a few skimmers. Really good, enjoyed it. Something I haven't done for a while, but definitely be doing it a bit more. Uh, we've then slowed down a bit, so we've had a little, we've started introducing a few nuggets of pellets on the pole line, like I showed you. We've dropped in on that. And, it was a bit slow, we didn't really catch a lot, but with a bit of, you know, constant feeding, just introducing little and often, the pegs just got better and better, till in the end, it's been absolutely fantastic. We've had some, from little skimmers up to some really big bream, four or five pounds, it's been really enjoyable. We've not had a chance to, to fish the short maggot line, because from being honest, it was that good on the long pole line. I've enjoyed it that much, I just I didn't want to come off it, to be honest. So, you know, we've had a great day, caught plenty of fish. Right, the moment you've all been waiting for, I know nobody's watched this video to, to look at me fishing, <laughs> you probably won't learn a lot, but the winner of Ben Ag's competition from last time is, is Simon Pointer. Well done mate, uh, we'll be in touch uh, over Facebook or Messenger and we'll get in touch with you and get your prizes out in the post. For the chance of winning some of the tackle we've used on the bank today, head down to the comment section below. Comment, awesome, awesome action. Make sure you like and subscribe and good luck. Thanks for watching today's video. Just goes to show that on, you know, even on the coldest, wettest, awful day like it was earlier on, you can still keep a few bites coming by swapping and changing tactics. 
moving around your peg and keep searching for the fish, you'll always get a few bites. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.